Welcome. Oh, yeah, I put some water on the as well. Uh, welcome. Oh, hello, hello, Brussels. Yeah, they, uh, they've been very, very excited. This, this tricky doll has been here so much, absolutely terrifying me. I have a horrible thing about dolls, <laughs> so it's been absolutely terrifying. Do you ever get used to seeing stuff like that? Sure, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I find the, the tiny chuffies actually kind of more disturbing than the bigger ones. Because it, it seems out of context somehow, or you can like stick, you, you don't know where they are. Um, oh. It just seems wrong in yeah, a way that good. I can't quite... Uh, put my, yeah, so anyway, the, the little ones are really the creepy ones. Oh dear, uh, but previous stuff aside, uh, are you enjoying Brussels? Have you been before? Is this your first time? I, uh, well, no, neither one of us. Um, I did a movie here uh, a bunch of years ago. Can you hear us? Yeah? Yeah. Um, I did a movie here a bunch of years ago and Fiona was like five. So, she may not remember Belgium as well as I do, but uh, I was here for three months, so I saw a lot of Belgium. And I loved it. And this still the, This is the 80s? You were here in the 80s? Yes. Was that before the Euro and the EU, I right? It was before the Euro. Yeah. Good knowledge. Yeah. Good knowledge. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you are our first um, like, father-daughter uh, combo on so, do you guys get to do this a lot together? Some. Yeah, we do. We've done, uh, I guess we've done about, yeah, we've done about five or six of them. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> this is the most, like, father daughter yeah. thing ever, so you like, come on. She bosses me around a lot. <laughs> Did you, because, like, obviously, you were acting before you were born. Is this what? Did you? Is it just a natural thing for you to, to go into this? Um, I, I so I, I went into it actually pretty late. I think most I was raised around the industry, like raised in Los Angeles, but I didn't become an actress or really start to pursue it until I was like 23. I used to produce documentaries for like the History Channel, <laughs> like uh, you know, I mean they were silly. It was like if aliens existed, what would be the or something, and then like a kid who doesn't know anything about physics would try to research what the answer to that was, and I, I was mean, that kid. That's um, the majority of the podcasts I listen to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> I was like that, but uh, I always, I always, uh, I always imagined that maybe, yeah, I, I, I got the opportunity to take an improv class and then did it, and it feels like flying. It's, yeah, yeah. Like one of the most exhilarating things I could do, and I was like, if I could make a living out of doing this, would be great. It took me forever to make a living. I was like a bartender for 14 years or something, but but now I'm working. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it was a slow progression, but That's I amazing. ended up doing it. Did you always think she would go into the business, or? Um, she was determined the last thing on earth she wanted to be was an actor, and I was very pleased with that. Um, it's not always an easy life, so, um, uh, and then, um, she was in Europe and came back, and of course she needed a job, so, um, I was doing a TV series, and, uh, the guy, I um, wanted to get her a PA job, you know, assistant. And um, the guy, you know, said, okay, bring her to lunch and we'll talk. And I brought her to lunch and he started talking and he looked at her and said, how come she's not an actress? <laughs> and uh, he wrote something for her and, and, uh, and started her off. Luckily you already had all of that, uh, luckily you already had that experience after doing it. Um, this was after the improv and so you... No, no, that, yeah. actually, that guy, uh, that actually did happen. I feel like these stories don't happen anymore or they do happen to actors' kids. I, 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 I was very lucky, I was just very lucky. But he actually um, uh, came for me to go into an acting class and when I did the acting class and I was like, if I could pursue this, it would be great. It's a wonderful but um, you never know if you're ever going to make any money. <laughs> I'll just, so uh, so it, it would be better to have a trust fund, but otherwise, um, yeah, I feel very lucky. I think um, uh, I got her a PA job, yes. and um, her first day, uh, her job was, it was like a hundred and, uh, it was like a hundred and ten uh, degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> outside, it was a desert. And her job was to turn the air conditioners, when 
which are on way on one side of the studio, and the other one was way on the other side of the studio. So we had air conditioning between takes. So she was running back and forth between those, and she heard, um, if we had Mr. Durf on the set, please, uh, make sure he has a part, and, uh, you know, somebody could cool him off as he comes in. And she looked at me and said, I got the wrong job. <laughs> Uh, did you did you have to do anything like that before you started to pick up more regular acting work? Did you have any? It's a good question. I started out when I was young, when I was 16. Um, I did summer stock, and I did a lot of technical stuff, building sets and that kind of thing. Then uh, I went to a, a really serious uh, place in New York called Circle Rep, and um, I did a lot of stage managing and, and that kind of thing, and, and uh, you know, eventually I started getting parts, and kabam, I got lucky. But no turning on or off air conditions. <laughs> oh, I did worse. I did worse. <laughs> I strung lights in, uh, in you know, in, in ceilings where it was rat shit, you know. <laughs> And uh, so, no, 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 I, it, uh... It, You've done your hard jobs. I did the hard jobs. I, I think, was your first movie you went over the cuckoo's nest? Do I have that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Really? That was your first? What a horrible, uh, no, I know, it was sucky uh, beginning, but, you know, Chucky made up for it. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking uh, of, like, let's, let's go into the, the Chucky thing, like, Obviously, that's in the 80s, all that sort of drama of film is just beginning and stuff. When you took that role, did you think it was going to be as many films and as many series down the line? Or not. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was like, I didn't think it was going to be, I thought, you know, do okay, be interesting, but I didn't think it was going to be as successful the first movie as it was. I, I think everybody was surprised by that. But it did, it just, it hit that sort of early sort of 80s, like, real resurgence of monsters and horror, and became like an iconic, you know, face in, in the whole well, horror film. There was a movie called The Incredible Doctor Five, which, um, which had all these elaborate, ridiculously elaborate murders in it. And I think that was the first, that, that was the beginning of the genre um, that Chucky came out of. Just before that, everything was still very serious um, horror, where like, this is really happening, you know, which nobody ever believed. So. Yeah, I mean, really, it did it. It came at time, obviously, in the 70s had that real indie boom, but horror wasn't really that prominent. And then, like you say, it was just sort of something hit around the time of Halloween and all those guys started. And the whole slasher genre obviously came out of the back of that boom. But, like, what was the pitch you got for Child's Play? Like, I worked with the director before in, a, in, a, in another movie, and um, he just called me up and said, do you want to do this? And, um, you know, I mean, you know, I, I had a family, so um, I was going to do... Um, that will happen occasionally, the rest of them, yeah. It just announced the rest of the occasion. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so, um, what was I saying? You were saying you were working with the director and, uh, Oh yeah, I worked with the director and, you know, um, I have family support, so unless it's a reason I don't want to do it, I do it. And there was no reason not to, so I did it. Uh, did, was there any sort of, because obviously now Chucky is, his mannerisms and his voice, everything's very iconic. Was there any, nearly any other version of that voice that, that you did or anything? Did I, you know, uh, it, was take, it took place in Chicago, the first, the first movie. And so I kind of made the accent Chicago. And, um, but Chucky had to be, Chucky couldn't be really a real person. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't approach Chucky in the way I would normally approach a, a performance. I wanted to make him um, kind of generic bad guy, um, but specifically terrified of, of, of uh, oblivion, of um, the idea of suddenly not being there at all. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, because so is, I mean, I find that a scary thought. Yeah, it's a really, really yeah, good way of approaching it. 
When did you become aware of Charles Play? Like it I mean, it's been a, it's been there. I guess I was seven when, uh, and I don't have many memories before it. So I think I was like pretty aware it was a thing by the time I was in uh, middle school, high school, because boys or kids would talk about it and be like, oh, she's Chucky's kid. <laughs> uh, and that made me like a little bit cooler than I was. Uh, and my birthday is the day before Halloween, so my yes. birthday parties were always Halloween. And he, he'll do the laugh once a year. He'll never do it for you guys. <laughs> I know you've asked, I'm sorry. But he would only do it for me once a year, and that was on my birthday. So, and it was, everybody was excited. So. I mean, it is an exciting, but also a terrifying present. <laughs> Hi, uh, yeah, happy birthday. I'm just gonna put chills in your spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny though, actually, I was in Los Angeles like three days ago, and uh, we did the, there's mazes, the Universal Studio has mazes, and we went on in the Chucky maze, which was a big deal this year, and it felt like home, or I can't even describe it. I was trying to figure out what it felt like, but I, I was going up to these dolls, and I was like, oh! You know, it was like a knife and bloody, and I was just like, oh, Yeah, the real reason we have a couch here is because this will become therapy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, I guess it's always been it's always been there. I've always been grateful for its fun, fucking weird, fun thing about it. But how it. how did you then like um, get involved in the franchise? What was the route to that? And like, what was so, that like for you to see that as well? I was like 28 or something, and I had done a season of True Blood and a couple. Um, I had just, I'd, I'd been an actress for about three years um, and done a little, uh, like a few things here and there. True Blood was probably the biggest thing I'd done. And uh, they gave me a, an opportunity to audition for the older sister. I, put, I was working in, in some fucking state. I was in the middle of nowhere. And anyway, I did an audition. The creator, Don Mancini, who I actually didn't know but I had met before, was like, you should put yourself on tape for the lead. And then I did that, and it was immediately pretty clear that there was a big interest. It was really scary for me. Scarier than anything I'd ever done, because of nepotism is absolutely a thing. I have no doubt about it. Um, but it was really scary to try to prove myself on such a public stage with something that's so close to my identity and family. And, so, and also, I, I hate everything I do anyway. <laughs> But um, I've gotten better as, it, as I've gotten older. But it was really scary, and I had no idea how popular Chucky was. Uh, I didn't get it. Um, and then after it got out, I was like, oh my god. And you're just like, oh, this is where Dad's laugh comes from. <laughs> well, it was, I was just, yeah, I just didn't realize that they're like, that Chucky, the Chucky fandom is so um, dedicated. <laughs> And Brad, were you just like, I told you so? <laughs> um, yeah, um, I, uh, yeah, I was just proud of her. Uh, That's lovely. I mean, I don't, you know, when you got her, and she did really, really well. I mean, I thought her performance was, was very clear and, um, very real. I believed her. Um, and there's, there's, as Don Mancini said, there's something about Fiona that makes you think that the kind of weird things that happen in the movie could really happen to her. Aww. Yeah. You, you too, Dad. <laughs> I believe your soul could go into a doll. <laughs> uh, we are going to let you guys ask some questions, so if you have, please get your hands up. We'll, we'll probably have to get the mic back to you, but I'll get to these guys first, and then, yeah, that'll be great. So we go one, two, three. On the set Death Machine, yeah. uh, she's a big fan. Uh, she read that you stayed in character 
for the whole of that shoot. Is that true or what are your memories of that? Yeah, it's always true. That's the way I do it. I, um, I uh, you know, get involved in the character. I remember when my girlfriend was with me at the very beginning, who I'm still with, um, I was playing, uh, we went to New Orleans and I was playing this scum guy who lied through, uh, and um, I was talking on the phone after she left and she said, you know, I really don't believe a word that's coming out of your mouth right now and uh, please don't talk to me until you finish the movie. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you, do you do that with every film? Yeah. Even well, like when you were Dream of Worms on you were in that? Oh yeah, I did, I, um, they did, uh, one guy had no idea that I wasn't English. He thought, he said, and then when I, I was finished, you know, I didn't have to talk anymore, so I just talked like me, and he was, he went up and said, why is Brad going around with that really phony American accent? <laughs> you know, so yeah. Oh, amazing. Do you do the same? Um, probably a little less. You know, there, there would be, I remember when he was playing Gemini Killer, it was really creepy for like a couple months in the house. But do you remember Death Machine specifically? What, what movie was that? Because I feel like, did we, I'm not sure we answered your question. But which one, which one was Death Machine? Death Machine, Death Machine was done in London. Was done in London. Who, what, what was it? Was it the... It was a big metal chicken that chased everybody around and chewed them up. It what was, did you uh, play? Who did you play? I played the guy who invented the big metal chicken. <laughs> Don't you remember? It was that time that he came home with the big metal chicken. <laughs> and I had locks. They had they put extensions in my hair. Did you? Yeah. What? Did you played the inventor. Were you were you an asshole? I learned that word in French. Toot de coup. Total asshole. You were an asshole. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and Couldn't stay in character. More. What? Stay in character. And it, it just, it shocked me. Well, you know, I had the uh, hit. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever played a nice character that you've stayed in character for? Yeah, I can't stay in character for those. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, I mean accents, and if you have an accent, you know, it's a way of talking that isn't your way of talking. It's not going to be natural. Mm. You know, it's not going to really sound like it's really coming from you unless you do it a lot. Yeah. So yeah. my way of forcing myself to do that kind of work is to do it all the time. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually thing. French, but uh, just <laughs> decided to be an Australian for a while. And well, you're really going to stop. You're doing so well. <laughs> I'll, I'll get out of it now. I'm stuck. Uh, we've got a question here. Yeah. How do you imagine your profession in the future and all the problems you have right now? Uh, I don't know if you'll, you feel free not to answer this one because of this strikes up, but the question was, how do you imagine your profession in the future with all the problems yeah. going on today? Can I imagine what? How do you imagine your profession in the future with all the problems going on today? Well, I don't, I, I don't know what problems you're referring to. But I, um, um, you know, there is this AI thing, and um, I really think we have to beat it. I mean, I, I think AI has to be seriously, seriously controlled. My big worry is, when I was young, there was records, and people cared about music, and even in the way that it sounded. And you bought expensive stereo sets that were, you know, um, and people paid real money for those. And then they came out with CDs. And the CDs were terrible. The sound was all squashed down. And it was awful. But people got used to it. And now, you know, people went to the theater to see movies, and that was like a real thing. Now people are watching movies on, on phones. So we get used to crap, garbage, things that aren't everything they could be, and we settle for that, and um, we forget what we lose. Mm, that hurt. Yeah. So. Thank you for coming.
I just wanted to know uh, how was the ambience on the set of Miami Vice. I remember you you play a wonderful, fantastic uh, drug lord in front of Don Johnson. And how was it to, to work on that series? Because it was uh, um, quite a series at the time uh, for cinematic ways and chromatic ways and so on. Yeah, it was, um, it was uh, style over content theory of of, um, of, that's very, literally what it was called. I mean, seriously, they called it that. Um, you know, it was, just, it was a scum. I was playing this scum drug dealer, you know? Who, and, you know, I did a lot of that. He's a sociopath. You know, I'm, I don't know why, but I have a life of doing sociopaths. So it was just another day at the, at the, at the office. But you did learn that you're very good at uh, being a drug lord in real life, so uh, I'm sure I can't remember. Yeah, the extra income during those yeah, yeah. years was uh, very good. After AI takes all our jobs. Yeah. 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 AI drug lord, you know, they're here first guys. Yeah. Uh, but um, we have to let you go back because you, you guys are so busy. And you got a photo shoot? Yeah. You've got photo shoots and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, these guys are here for the rest of the day, so please. And I just wanted to say, this is I feel like um, I've just had so many great, kind of enthusiastic, cool people that are really trying to speak English well, too. Anyway, I've had, well, I've had a really good time. So just yeah, thank you for your out. effort in yeah. terms of talking to us. <laughs> you know, because I know it's been hard, because we should speak French, we should speak uh, Flemish, but we don't. And so. also, his dad is French. I realize we're not in France, we're in Belgium, but whatever. That's it, that's all. So like, all, him in now. All, all, all you need is get past to Belgium and you'll go method and you'll get cracked in, in a week. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. But yeah, we're gonna let him go. So you know what to do, guys. Uh, we have a little, yeah, again, if you've not been before, we get a picture with all the guests. So uh, you guys know what to do behind. Lots of good faces. Everyone go! Thank you One more time, please! Woo! Toast to the first, get the photos, don't we down, and we're again, we love having wonderful people down. Thank you. We're gonna hand over to the cosplay now, so...